Hello and welcome to Badsley Ensor near Nuneaton, a village in Warwickshire which once had a great bus service which enabled Tina Mitten to get to work at Birmingham Airport. Well, when the service was cut, Tina said she had to give up her job and four months later she's still looking for work. I'm really angry because I want to work. I love the job that I was doing um, at the airport and um, that's all, all gone. And it's, it, it, the practicality of it is I have a mortgage to pay and how do I pay the mortgage? This year councils across the Midlands trimmed their bus subsidies by tens of thousands of pounds. So what effect is this having on rural communities? Well actress Anna Karen, who made her name on the buses, grabbed her pass and jumped on board to find out. remember me from the TV series on the buses. I played Olive. I'll tell you what, we'll go and have a cup of tea and you stay here and attend to the bus. No, I can't. I'm the trainee, Jack. Oh, oh shut, shut up. up. <laughs> that was back in 1973. But I'm a senior citizen now and I've got my concessionary bus pass to prove it. But my bus pass ain't much cop now on scores of bus journeys because they've been cut. I want to know how that's affecting people. I'm travelling around the Midlands on this beautiful old bus to find out. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. We do need a bus. We're cut off. We're on an island. I mean, there's nothing nicer to go and a bus We're come and off. pick you up. Yeah. Total disaster. You want to start looking at it and thinking about it. And I'm taking some of the people I'm meeting down to Westminster so we can tell the government exactly what we think about it all. Say now, buses. Things ain't half changed since on the buses. It's all about economics now. Now take the 6.1 bus from Belper to Matlock in Derbyshire. Not enough people use it in the evenings or on Sundays for the bus company to make enough money. So it relies on subsidy from the county council. If the subsidy was removed completely, we would be looking to remove the service because they cannot run commercially. There is insufficient demand from fair paying customers to keep that service running. Hundreds of routes across the West Midlands are subsidised so they can run so-called unprofitable services. But what happens when the council takes the subsidy away? This is Joyce. She lives in Loughborough, but her daughter lives eight miles away in the village of Osgathorpe. She's got to look after her granddaughter so her daughter can go out to work. If my daughter's home from work just before five o'clock, I can get back here. If she's not, I have to stay the night, travel back on the 10 o'clock bus the following morning. What, there's no bus after 5 o'clock? No. So, Joyce, why do you think they're making these bus cuts? They don't have to live like it. No, they don't. They the don't their mothers care. have to catch buses to go and look after the grandchildren. No. Last year, Leicestershire County Council threatened to cut the subsidy to Joyce's bus. That would have meant the end of the line for the 129. The elderly people in the Belton village, in the 81-year-olds, this is their lifeline. And if this goes, they've got nothing because they don't see anyone from one day to the next. This bus has been saved, but only after Joyce and her friends petitioned the county council. But that's more than could be said for the people of Heather, nine miles down the road. No, we haven't got a bus in our no. village at all. It's not fair, really. No, it isn't fair. I've lived at Heather 60 years. I know times have changed, but we always had buses. Buses to take my children to school, me to work, bring me home, the shoppers. The councils pulled the subsidy for their bus service and not surprisingly, it stopped running. We're cut off, we're on an island. That's how I feel. Yes. I go out once a week shopping. I can't get to the shops, I can't go. I feel a prisoner, full stop. Fancy taking away a whole villages only means a public transport. That really takes a biscuit. Well, it's time to get back on the buses to get some answers. Who's pulling the subsidies and why? 
We're going to see the man who deals with the money for Leicester Council. Come on. But first, we have to pick up some passengers. First stop, Loughborough Library. That's it, that's where we're going. Hi, I'm Anna, I'm Anna Karen, you are? I'm Nicholas Russian, Deputy Leader of Leicester Council. Right, Council. can I want to talk to you about this? All these people have come. I see that, very good. Because they're really fed up that their buses are being cancelled. We have to balance the books. I, I can look into the 153 in particular for you. Our problem is that we've got to make £79 million worth of savings over the next four years, and we are one of the only counties in the country that has a policy of everybody should live within 800 metres of an hourly bus service. So I'll just pick you up on what you said about everybody living within 800 metres of a bus service. And on a Sunday and bank holiday, there is no bus service, and that is to Bradgut Park, which is one of the most, one of the most used tourist areas. It just After makes 12, a mockery seven of days, that no pledge. Service. It's not really been kept, has it? Can I just ask you, the money that you get, where does this come from? The majority of the money in Leicestershire comes from council taxpayers. You are going to be paying 75% of whatever we spend on buses. Only a quarter comes from the government. You could do with more, couldn't you? Leicestershire is one of the poorest funded counties in the country. They say we're wealthy, so we don't need the money. Oh, right. So shall we go to central government and talk to them, then? Yes. Right, we'll have a go at them. Come on, on your gate. Hurry up. This bus might be old, but it's done off shift, and it's not long before we've got the government in our sights. Right, here we are at Westminster. We're just about to come over Westminster Bridge to meet Mr Norman Baker. I'm not sure if the Minister for Buses expected such a crowd. You just don't realise what you are doing to people's lives. You know, well, cut back, cut back, save money here, save money there. Yeah. What about these poor people? Bus companies are legally meant to be no worse off and no better off for carrying concessionary travel. Well, are you suggesting then that the council this morning that said these hands were tied and it was all down to Westminster was actually yeah. not well, telling the truth? The hands aren't tied, they've got freedom within their envelope. I don't pretend they've got an easy settlement, they've got less money than they had before. Uh, it's up to councils how they make the savings. So have they got a difficult position? Yes, they have. Do they have to cut buses? No, they don't. One politician says one thing, another says something else. So who do you believe? but we've told them what we think about our buses being cut. Let's see if it makes any difference. Meanwhile, back in Heather, they've had five months of no bus. But Burj Rikiki's got a plan. Well, this is it, ladies. It's an um, eight-seater, or as known as eight-pane seats, and a driver. We can actually go up to 16-seater without having a, a, a special license to carry passengers. There's only one problem with this community Enter, bus. He needs volunteers to drive it and donations to keep it on the road. But what do they think about it? The seats are not very good. I don't want this. I, I like getting on a bus. It's lovely to go to the bus stop and get on a bus. They've had this free transport for many, many years. They feel they've got a, a right to it, and I'm really not sure whether they have or not. We've got to start looking after ourselves. It's a nanny state. We've got used to the nanny state, and now, unfortunately, like everything, all good things come to an end, and we've got to buckle down and do it ourselves. The sun may be setting on our rural buses, but Verge is sure he's got the answer. Who knows, maybe more people like him will start setting up on their own. Sadly, that might be the only way we can keep our buses in places like this. If you'd like to comment on that story, why not drop me an email, mary.rhodes at bbc.co.uk. Now, like buses...